Replacing the Cord Mojo's battery is rather straightforward. Finding the Cord Mojo battery is not. The end of this video is going to discuss the process of getting a replacement battery, but for now, let's just get into the meat and potato of this video. The replacement of the battery. Let us assume that you are able to find a genuine replacement battery online, which I was able to do. This is it. It is apparently a Chinese manufactured battery that has the same model number as the Cord Mojo battery that is originally installed in the Mojo. However, everything on this battery that's in writing is in Chinese other than letters and numbers. However, what I found was a number and a letter set that looked very similar to a product number or a brand number or a battery number. One of those three. And I did a quick Google search to try to find that particular brand and that particular model number of battery. It was very difficult to find anything. In fact, the things I did find were not this particular battery. They were for aerosol or aerosoft guns. In order to dismantle the Cord Mojo, you are going to need a hex key or an Allen key. And the size of the Allen key has to be 1.5. Uh, 1.5 what? I don't know, 1.5. It just says 1.5. When you go to your hardware store, make sure you get an Allen key set that has at least the 1.5 size. The Cord Mojo is rather easy to disassemble and this is probably the easiest mechanism of disassembly that you can think of. All you got to do is unscrew these four screws on either side, eight in total, and gently peel the unit apart. Now when you do this, don't do it like I'm doing here. Instead, what you should do is place the cord mojo flat down on a surface face down. It'll make things a whole lot easier and that only dawned on me several minutes into the process. When you put the Allen key into the screw, make sure that you're not pushing too hard. You really don't want to mess up the screw or screw the screw if you know what I mean because I doubt you'll be able to find these particular size screws at your local hardware store. And please also be very careful where you put these screws. If you lose one, good luck trying to find a replacement. The twisting and the undoing of the screws is just like anything else in life. It's rather easy once you start doing it. Now, let's get to the opening. But wait a minute. Something odd is going on here. I mean, I'm reminded of that movie, the Indiana Jones movie. I mean, what could possibly happen if I open this magical little box? Well, that didn't go as planned. Nah, I'm just kidding. So you open up this box and what do you know? There are no magical unicorns or crazy ghosts or the Bible characters fitted inside. It's simply a circuit board with chips and transistors and plastic bits and stuff. Huh, are you surprised that the Cord Mojo's internals are not made of leprechaun blood or magic leaves or marijuana buds? Because I'm not. Look, here's the thing. The Cord Mojo is like any other electronic device. It has a motherboard, it's got chips, it's got transistors, it's got ports, and that's about it. There's nothing obscenely special about this thing. Now, in order to dismantle the battery, all you gotta do is gently yank on the battery terminal right there. There you go. Out in a jiffy. And here it is. The back side of the Cord Mojo is fully dedicated to two things. First of all, the battery, which is stuck to the back of this unit. And you could just easily peel it off. Very simple. Indeed, there is actually a cutout inside that back plate that will help you rest the battery in the correct position, but we'll get to that later. Comparing the original battery to the knockoff battery, uh, you can see that it's exactly the same. It's the same in dimension, it's the same in the white wrapping, it's the same in the cord, especially the terminal because that's the most important thing. 
And frankly, it weighs exactly the same. There is no difference between this battery and the battery that I purchased. Indeed, the product number or the battery number is the same, ARL9056. And on the Chinese uh, battery, it says the same thing, ARL9056. But trust me, if you do a, an eBay search for ARL9056, you'll end up with a lot of different batteries that will not work with the Cord Mojo. By the way, when I opened the Mojo, these three plastic bits were just lying there, and I had no idea what the heck these things were. Well, it's a very simple explanation, and I'll explain it at the end. But if this happens to you, just take the plastic bits and put them aside next to your screws, and make sure you don't lose them, because you'll come to find out they are quite necessary in working with the Cord Mojo. Now, taking a closer look at the circuit board, do you see anything that is magical or special or something you've never actually seen before? I don't. You have an ARM chip on the left, you have the circuits all around, you've got ports that have been soldered in place and, and a transistor or two, and well, there you go. It's the cord mojo in all of its unglory. But let's get to the battery change itself. Now, remember those three things I told you about? They are attached to the three little marbles. And here they are. Actually, when you take the marbles out, they feel kind of cool. They don't feel like any other marbles that I've ever handled as a kid. They feel slightly rough on the edges, but still rather smooth. It's an interesting manufacturing process that Cord went through. Regardless, the three marbles will just sit inside their individual holes. The plastic bits are going to rest on top of the marbles in three individual grooves. And I'm going to show you exactly how it's supposed to happen. So you just pop the marbles back in there and they'll sit right there as long as you don't turn the unit upside down. And you take the plastic bit and you rest it back in place. Now watch carefully as I'm doing this. One of the things that is really hard to explain on the video and show on the video because these plastic bits are so small is that one side of the plastic bits is slightly etched upwards and the other side is flat. Now that etched upward side has to be facing towards you when you place the plastic bits down. If you place them, pla place that rough edge, that upwards edge downwards into the marbles, it's not going to work. See the idea is these plastic bits rest on the marbles and when you press down the raised edge that's pointing towards you is the edge that's going to be pointing towards the buttons that are inside the cord mojo. And it's those raised portions that are going to make contact with those particular buttons, hence giving you volume up and down control as well as on and off control. Now, putting the battery inside the unit is, you know, fairly easy. It's self-explanatory. You peel off the uh, glue side and then you peel off the uh, rubber side. Now, there's a rubber side because it's coated for a couple of reasons, I suspect. Number one is to protect the internals from the battery itself. And number two, so that it can provide some sort of heat shield against the internals. Placing the battery back in might be a little confusing. It was certainly a little confusing for me because I got turned around a little bit. Now, which way was the battery facing when I first opened the th this thing and which way is it supposed to sit? And, uh, uh, yeah, it was a little confusing, like I said. However, after a bit of finagling and kind of thinking about the problem, I was able to figure it out. And it's rather obvious after you take a moment to take a deep breath. By the way, the adhesive on both batteries, the knockoff battery as well as the original battery, is practically the same. It's not a whole lot of adhesive force, it's just enough to keep the battery in place as you put the back cover back onto the front cover. And so it's really easy to peel the battery off if you find that there's something wrong. When you put your replacement battery in and you reconnect it, if it has a charge, you will know immediately because the Cord Mojo's LED lights will flash and you'll turn on. And that's a good indication. You can just undo the battery if you want and replace and take big pictures and smell the Cord Mojo's internals if you like and all of that great stuff. And here I am trying to figure out 
What did I do wrong? So here's how you have to actually fix it. When you open the Chord Mojo, just pay attention to how it was opened so that you can close it later on. My fault was that I didn't pay attention when I opened it and now I forgot. But here how it, here's how it works. You see those three little yellow things at the bottom of the Chord Mojo's circuit board? Those are the things that actually will be the buttons for the three marbles. And so you have to make sure that the buttons and the marbles line up. And this is me remembering that's what's supposed to happen. Then all you have to do is place the battery so that the battery terminal is facing to the left. Uh, no, 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 the left. I said left. Yeah, there you go. Facing to the left so that it can connect to the board itself. That simple. Uh, no theme reviews. Sometimes I do wonder. When you place the battery in there, you want to make sure that it's not actually touching the three marbles because if that happens, it may prevent the marbles from actually, you know, moving freely, which they're supposed to do when the unit is all back together. The other thing you're going to find as you do this is that the battery terminal itself, the wire, isn't particularly long. So you're going to have to stretch things just a little bit and finagle things here and there. And you will need to apply and reapply the battery so that it sits perfectly inside that groove. And the reason you want to make sure that it sits perfectly is because, well, there are very little, minor, tiny tolerances inside this black box and when the battery is sitting in there it doesn't have a whole lot of room for all those other ports to sit around the battery and what i'm doing here is trying to figure out why one end of the mojo is closing and the other end is not and if you carefully open the cord mojo and you take a look inside you'll find out very quickly that one or the other of the ports is just grazing just barely grazing the battery, which means that you will have to unpeel the battery and then peel it back onto the bottom of the case so that it's not making contact with any of the ports. And this is what I had to do to fix it. I merely just unpeeled the battery and moved it back just a tiny bit so that one of the ports was going to sit flush. You want to be absolutely careful. I mean, that should go unsaid, but this is a rather expensive unit. And the last thing you want is that in your crave and craze to reassemble and get this thing rolling again, you might just press a little too hard and break one of the pores, which would be quite unfortunate. So my suggestion is Take it really slow and only press down and seal everything in place once you are sure that nothing is being impacted. And there you go. Once everything is seated perfectly as it should, make sure that it turns on and that you can switch the volume up and down and the lights are actually changing colors. You want to do this now but and not after you put everything back together because then it's really going to be frustrating. It was clear at this point to me that I had done everything that I was supposed to do and I did it correctly. The battery does function perfectly and the cord mojo didn't break in my, well, clumsy, I will admit, efforts to unscrew and then unmount the battery and then try to mount it again. Ultimately, the battery replacement portion is quite easy to do once you see this video and in fact I bet you'll be able to do it within a few moments and not 15 minutes because it took me 15 minutes to figure this out because once again there are no videos showing the process and this will be the first. Once you put the screws back in my suggestion is that you screw each side and you kind of mirror the other side, meaning if you go from top left, you then go to the bottom right. And if you go to center, then you go to the center to the other side. And the reason you want to do this is because you really want to apply equal force downwards because, again, the tolerances are rather small.
and hopefully you did not over tighten any of the screws. Look, you really don't want to mess up the screws because once again, it might be really hard for you to find a replacement. In which case, just take it slow. And there you go. Make sure everything is finally tightened just enough without over tightening and your unit will be back together almost like brand new. Once everything is screwed, turn it on again just to make sure that nothing went wrong. Now, at this point, you would say, hey, job well done. But because this is the Court Mojo and because there are evil spirits inside, I think that it's important to also test to make sure that none of the audio ports, none of the USB ports, none of the internals was damaged in the process of changing the battery because you never know if there might have been a short somewhere in the process. So what I ended up doing is plugging the Court Mojo back into my computer and then plugging in my headphones and playing a piece of music. And as it turned out, everything played just fine. And this has been the Cord Mojo battery replacement process. Yes, this was a very long video on just changing a battery, but since there are no other videos about it, I figured might as well go through all the steps together. Now, in the next portion of this video, I'm going to tell you how hard it is to find the battery and where you can actually find the battery. Changing the Cord Mojo battery, as you saw, is fairly straightforward. However, finding the Cord Mojo battery is not. If you go to Google and you search for Cord Mojo battery replacement, you will get a lot of results talking about people complaining about the Cord Mojo battery and maybe a handful, really two to three, results talking about a battery replacement option itself. Now, Google might suggest batteries for your Cord Mojo like it does here on the side. Don't buy into that. These are not the batteries for the Cord Mojo. The Cord Mojo's battery has a very specific amount of voltage that needs to be put into the device and it has to be a specific size and the actual connector into the board has to be a very specific type as well. So the safest thing to do is look for the actual battery replacement. There are only three options that I was able to find. Now, the first option is to take it to a local distributor. If you happen to have a local distributor or shop that will fix or replace the cord mojo. There's one individual on HeadFi who talked about his own struggles about this. He lives in Australia and in order to have his Cord Mojo battery replaced, his local distributor or shop quoted him 340 Australian dollars. That's right, 340 Australian dollars to replace a battery. He ended up buying a $140 battery and then having someone replace it for him later. And that's clearly not a very good option, is it? Paying 340 Australian dollars. There have been other HeadFi members who have complained that Cord itself has quoted around $200 to replace the battery. If you go and keep searching on Google, you will find option two. Option two is sending your battery to Europe and having a local distributor in Europe replace the battery for you and send your unit back. One of these places is called Excellence Mir Music, spelled kind of weird, obviously. They sell the replacement battery for 99 euro, meaning you actually have to send your unit, your Cord Mojo, across the pond, uh, the Atlantic Ocean, and to Europe, wherever this place is located, and let them handle your beloved Cord Mojo for however long it takes and pay them 99 euro. Oh, and by the way, there's additional shipping costs and VAT fees and taxes that will go in along with it. Not to mention, you might very well have lost your Cord Mojo across that journey. If not, then you will very likely have to wait an exorbitant amount of time for customs in your own country to clear the product going there and back. 
<sighs> but let's assume that you don't have 99 euro. Could you go with something less expensive? Well, if you live in the UK, then yes, there is a UK distributor or company called Audio Sanctuary that does the Cord Mojo battery replacement for 77 pounds. Now, if you don't live in the UK, you will have to pay for shipping and VAT and other taxes included. Shipping can be as low as, well, they say one pound and 50p or one dollar and 50 cents, really, if you want to put it into American terms. And if you are shipping it internationally, then it'll start from three dollars and 95 cents, you know, in American terms. But actuality is quite different. If I put in my country, which is the United States, the shipping cost grows astronomically. For a seven day turnaround for shipping alone, it's 18 pounds. For International Express Courier, which takes one to four days, it's 63 pounds. And what does that equate to once you factor in the actual cost for the battery plus the shipping? Well, remember, as I said, it's 99 euro plus whatever the shipping cost and that and all that stuff happens to be. 99 euro to United States dollars comes out to 109 dollars. What about the Quart Mojo battery replacement from Audio Sanctuary from the UK? 77 pounds plus roughly, I don't know, 20 to 30 pounds for shipping comes out to about 109 US dollars. This seems to be a trend. Now, these companies will change their prices whenever they feel fit. Indeed, I have seen prices for battery replacement exceeding 150 American dollars. This just happens to be two of the websites I was able to find within 10 minutes that's selling it a replacement that is for less than 150 American dollars. But there is the alternative. The alternative is getting a battery from a Canadian company called HiFiPro.ca. CA for, you know, Canada. This is where I purchased my battery. It was 89 Canadian dollars, which came out to about 69 American dollars. This is the battery that I put into the Cord Mojo during the first portion of this video. It is fully compatible with the Cord Mojo, as this company says. It was shipped to me, I got it within a week, and as you saw, the replacement itself was fairly pain free. This will set you back once you round up for shipping costs and taxes approximately $90. Now you may say, why would I do this and not just send my unit overseas and have it professionally reinstalled? Well, you could, but one of the things that people really cherish is actually getting their products back. And international shipping is not exactly the safest way to ship a very expensive product. Ultimately, the decision whether you want to do it yourself or if you want to send the battery and the unit to some other country, to some great stranger, and entrust that your unit will in fact be repaired and sent back with a replacement battery, well, if that's a risk you want to take, then that's certainly your right to do. However, if you're looking for an alternative option, then HiFiPro.ca is in fact the place where you can get a legitimate cord mojo battery replacement this is where i got mine and quite frankly i'm glad i did if you are not a patron of this channel but you do like my content and you find it informative then please consider donating to me once a month on patreon it would really help me and it will help my channel keep growing and for me to buy new products for review because every day i keep getting requests to review products i really don't have if you have a comment or a suggestion or just some insight, please leave it in the comment section below. If you have a request for a particular review from one of my products that I have on my product list, then please use the product review form that I have listed in the description below. Follow that description and I will get to your review request as soon as possible. I hope this rather lengthy battery replacement video has been of some help, and if it has, then let me know. If it hasn't, then, well, kindly let me know what could have changed, and if there's some additional information that I can add in a supplementary video that might be of some benefit to you. Other than that, I hope you all have a wonderful Friday evening and a, an amazing weekend up ahead. Take care.